Reverse by Black K Cat. Chapter 78 Monstrum. Karamini! Karama turns just as the door flies open and he drops down onto one knee, catching the small body that comes flying at him. Naruto wraps his arms around his neck, clinging desperately, and Karama lets out a long breath, sinking back on his heels and hugging Naruto tightly to him in return. Hey, kids. He says gently, burying his face in golden hair and thinks, I did it. I saved you. No more pain, no more Obito, no more Zetsu or Kaguya. He stopped that terrible future before it could happen, saved Naruto before he was even really in danger, and it's good. It's amazing. He feels more of all three right down to his bones, and the feeling doesn't seem like it's going away. Naruto pulls back to look up at him with wide blue eyes and says solemnly, I'm glad you're okay, Karamani. Gara and said Chukaku couldn't feel you for a little while, so he started to get worried. Crap, right. Kamui uses a separate dimension, so of course the other Riju wouldn't be able to feel his presence while he was there. Hopefully Chukaku didn't lose what sanity he has left, fretting like the idiot he is. Where's... Karama starts to ask, but a small hand tugs on his sleeve, and without having to look, he leans over and scoops Gara up in his free arm, settling the little boy on his lap. There you are, Squirt. Everything okay? Gara nods, though his eyes are a little wider than normal, and he tips forward to hide his face in Karama's shirt. I'm okay if you are, Karamani, he says, muffled but audible. Karama tackles ruffling first crimson hair, then blonde. Yeah, I'm fine. No casualties except the bad guys, so we're good. And the hospital bed where Sinade stuck him, complete with dire threats about what she would do to him if he left it, Kakashi makes a sound of protest, pushing up on one elbow to give Kurama a look that he probably learned from his ninken. How cruel, Kurama! Forgetting my valiant sacrifices in the name of your safety! You're tired ass, not dying. Karama rolls his eyes. Shut up and sleep, and you'll be fine. Karama huffs at him, but flaps his back down, wincing a little when the movement jars the IV in his arm. I'm feeling hideously unappreciated, he tells the ceiling woefully. If only I had a hot redhead to coddle me and feed me grapes. I'm sure it would help me get better much faster. Karamani! Karamani! I can go get Roshi! Naruto volunteers brightly. He's got red hair, and he got that hot rock stuff! Lava, Gara tries. Lava. Karama corrects, ruffling Gara's hair and hiding his growing grin. Then he can spit, so we must be really hot all the time! Naruto finishes triumphantly. Kakashi groans lower, pain, and drags a pillow over his face. No, thank you, he says, muffled. I think I just rediscovered my will to live on my own. Are you sure? Naruto asks, insistent. May will probably let you borrow him if you ask nicely. May, huh? Karama raises a brow because that's not what he expected, even if it is massively amusing. With a snicker, he shifts, settling on the floor and crossing his legs under him as he leans back against the side of the bed. From above, there's a hum, a rustle, and then fingers sliding through his hair and rubbing lightly over the back of his neck. Karama leans back into the touch a little, though all he says is, Don't encourage the bastard, kid. It'll be fine. Okay! Naruto accepts that cheerfully, then grabs Karama's hand, tugging on it. Karamani, can Sakura-chan come over and play? Can she have Rama with us? She's really cool! Apparently, Team 7 is going to be getting an early start this time around, Karama thinks. Smiling, and it's a little bittersweet, but he thinks of his Naruto and Sakura, brother and sister in every way that mattered, shoring each other up and giving their lives for the chance at a better world. And nothing in existence would make him say no! Of course, Karama tells him, looping his arm around Naruto's waist and smiling down at him. I was planning to get some ramen after this. You're going to come, right? Yeah! Naruto cheers and grabs Gara's hand. Gara! Gara! You're gonna go too, right? We can find Sasuke and Sakura and Yugi Tony and Funi and everyone! We can all eat together and it'll be like a big family! Gara smiles a little, looking up at Kurama and then back at Naruto. It is a big family, he says quietly, but doesn't protest when Naruto drags him up out of Kurama's lap and to his feet. I'll meet you there. 
Kurama promises when they both look back at him expectantly. He tweaks Naruto's nose, unable to fight a smile, and says gruffly, Go on, go make trouble for someone else. Okay. Naruto beams, throws himself back in to hug Kurama tightly and cries, I love you, Kurama me! I love you, okay? Then he's bolting out the dwarf, running flat out with Gara scampering to keep up, and Kurama chuckles as he watches them go. The fingers resting on the nape of his neck squeeze gently, then fall away, and Kakashi sits up. I could go for ramen, he says cheerfully, pulling his IV out and swinging his legs over the edge of the mattress. Kurama eyes him a little wearily, then blows out a breath in an exasperated sigh and gets to his feet, hooking an arm under Kakashi's and tugging him fully upright. You realize the old hag is going to crush your skull like a melon, right? He asks. You'll just have to protect me, Kakashi tells him blithely, and to his credit, he's mostly standing under his own power, even if he isn't quite as steady as normal. From Senju Tsunade, Kurama demands, and he takes a step back, watching warily as Kakashi balances on his own. Screw that, I'd rather face Zetsu again. Kakashi pauses, considering... And then winces a little. Fair enough. No power on earth could keep Kurama from rolling his eyes at that. And you're still going to test her temper, he demands, following Kakashi's mostly steady steps out of the hospital room. You're a moron. You'll just have to do something nice for me before I die, Kakashi tells him, as innocent as the summer sky. Sage, Kurama hates his stupid face. He's just about to open his mouth and tell Kakashi that when there's a commotion at the far end of the hall. Kotetsu and Izumo are shouting for assistance, staggering into the ward with a body slumped between them. Kurama stiffens, the smell of dragged blood almost overwhelming, and takes a step back as a familiar figure bolts out of one of the neighboring rooms. Tsunade gasps out a strangled, Sensei! And then she's moving, flying down the hall with her hands already starting to glow green. She presses her fingers to Sarutobi's chest, relief immediately suffusing her form and orders sharply, Get him on a bed! You, find Shizune and send her here! What happened? We found him in the forest while we were doing a sweep for enemies, Kotetsu says, helping Izumo maneuver the Sangame into a stretcher. Donzo was there too! It looks like they were fighting and Sarutobi must have killed him! He's, uh, really dead! Tsunane goes still, and Kurama can't quite see her face, but the line of her back is stiff. Shemara, Danza? She asks. Kotetsu blinks, and he and Izumo share a confused look. Yes, Izumo says after a moment. A shaky breath, and then Tsunade nods. His chakra system has been overloaded, she says, dragging herself back to the task at hand. And his heart is failing. I could save him, but he's going to be recovering for a long time. Find Kushina. She's going to need to take up her duties sooner than expected and get word to the clan heads. She'll need their support with the other Kage. Right away, Tsunade Sama. Kotetsu vanishes out the nearest window in a blur and Izumo heads down the hall at a run. Kurama flicks a glance at Sarutobi, still and pale and bloody against the sheets, and then slips into the room behind him. Kakashi is already there, lounging casually against the wall like he isn't hiding from the woman outside. And from the bed, Hayate is giving him a weary look. She's distracted, Kurama tells Kakashi, mostly amused. Sarutobi will definitely live, which is more than I can say for you. Relief bleeds into the line of Kakashi's shoulders, but he tips his nose up and says airily, I wasn't worried. Tsunade-sama is the best. Which is why you're running away from her. Kurama retorts, but he drags the window open and leans out. Open street beneath them, even if it's a little busy, and that's good enough for him. It's a shinobi village anyway. People are used to shinobi dropping out of the sky anywhere and everywhere. You're going to die of pneumonia if I leave the window open, he asks Hayate. The Dugujo flushes a little, but he doesn't cough. It's fine. I'm only in here for some follow-up tests, he says. Kakashi, you look as blindingly handsome as always. Kakashi cuts in, beaming his bullcrap smile. Thank you, I think Kurama agrees. Kurama huffs. No, I don't agree. You look like a half-priced zombie without the common sense to just die, he retorts. Maybe you should have just stayed in bed like you were supposed to. Because he's an idiot, Kakashi just hums, politely skeptical. You're the one who couldn't keep your hands off of me, he points out. That kiss on the wall... Shut up and jump out the window, 
Karama gives him a pointed shove, waves absently to Hayate, and follows Kakashi down to the street. There is no one around who will immediately run to Tsunade and report Kakashi's jailbreak, thankfully, and Kurama turns towards Ichiraku, tugging his rather tattered shirt a little more closely around him. It's a lost cause, scorched and stained, but it's still winter, and better than nothing. You're very hard on clothes, aren't you? Kakashi muses, eyeing him sidelong. It almost makes me wonder why you bother with a shirt at all. Because it's cold, Kurama retorts, glaring at him. And you don't get to talk. You're the one who destroyed my first set of new clothes, you know. Kakashi winces faintly. I could go an entire lifetime without remembering that I stabbed you with a chidori. Thanks. Given what other memories that must bring up, Kurama doesn't blame him. I gave you a concussion in return, didn't I? That makes us even. It's pretty much the same if you count how fast I heal. Judging by the expression Kakashi is wearing, that wasn't quite as reassuring as Karama intended it to be. With a sigh, he reaches over, catching Kakashi's wrist and then sliding his hand down to interlock their fingers. And yeah, okay, he could get used to this hand-holding thing, even if it is bullcrap that he had to suffer through far too much of with Naruto and Sasuke the first time around. Kakashi gives him a mildly startled glance, then makes a sound of amusement, curling his fingers over Karama's hand. You're adorable, he says like it's a revelation. Screw you, Karama retorts instantly, wrestling. He goes to yank his hand away, but Kakashi doesn't let go, and maybe he doesn't try as hard as he conceivably could. I am not! I'm a son of the sage and a monster of Nordal nightmares, you fucker! You should give in and accept it, Kakashi advises him breezily. It will be much less painful in the long- Ow! Jerk, Karama mutters, removing his elbow from Kakashi's fence. There's a light chuckle from behind them, and Karama turns sharply, pulling Kakashi with him. For one fractured heartbeat, he thinks it's Kisame, but of course it's not. It's Raido smiling at them with two familiar shapes half hidden behind him. You two look friendly for a shinobi and a monster of mortal nightmare, he says, casting a glance at their hands, but it's said kindly, and his happiness looks genuine. The slant of his mouth when he looks up at Karama is only faintly cautious, weighted far more towards friendly. And Karama doesn't know if it's because he tried to save Genma or because Kakashi accepts him, but either way, he's grateful. We get by. Kakashi drawls, still rubbing his ribs like the overdramatic ass he is. Karama hadn't hit him that hard. I thought you'd be with Genma. Raido waves a hand at the small bodies behind him. I was, but since everything's over with, I had to get the kids. They want to see Genma too. Sai leans around Raido just enough to wave solemnly at Karama, while Shin regards them with sharp, careful eyes for a moment before he nods. Hey, Karama says, crouching down to meet their eyes, and... It's still a faint ache, the memory of the Sai from the future, another friend who died for his friends. But it's offset by the fact that Danzo is dead, and Shin is alive. Things are a heck of a lot better now than they ever were before. You two picked a pretty brave guy to tag along with. Yen was a good shinobi. Sai looks at Shin for a moment, then back at Karama. He faced Donzo Sama alone. He says like this is the highest mark of bravery he can imagine. And Raido said we could stay, even though Donzo Sama is gone now. Raido flushes a little, rubbing a hand over his hair. Genma would put me out on my ass if I didn't, he says, chuckling. And he'd keep you two instead. I like it better this way. Genma wouldn't do that, Shin informs him. Faith, absolute. He loves you too. You're his weakness. If you were killed, he would be vulnerable. And there's the goopy factor coming out. Karama thinks, rolling his eyes. Raido is clearly at a loss for words and not entirely sure what to say to that. So Karama offers, next time, leave off the last part, kid. Most people don't advertise the fact that they think in logistics and leverage. Shin blinks, looking faintly bewildered. Oh, I'm sorry. That at least makes Raido smile and shake his head. He pats Shin's shoulder reassuringly, pushing lightly to steer him towards the hospital. No harm done, don't worry. We'll work on it. Come on, Genma's waiting, and he's only patient when he wants to be. Kakashi hums quietly, watching the three of them disappear through their main doors. Tenzo was lucky he got out, he says. Lucky that you convinced him to get out. Karama corrects, and when Kakashi shoots him a startled look, he just shrugs, turning towards Ichirachu again. He used to talk about it to Naruto, to help him deal with Sai. 
Last time around, there wasn't a Gemma to snatch them up. Kakashi winces a little, but there's humor leaching back into his tongue when he says, I don't think you have any way to talk about child snatching, Karama. Screw you. Karama grumbles, but can't really bring himself to mean it. I didn't snatch them. For the most part, they came to me. Hmm. Kakashi sounds far too amused, and he catches Karama's elbow when it comes in for a second hit. There's a pause, and then he asks, without ever quite looking at Karama, And now what? What the heck do you mean? Karama asks, confused. Kakashi gazes very determinedly on the end of the street. You've gotten rid of Akatsuki, taken care of Obito, Sinza too defeated, there's no threat to the Jinchuriki anymore. Half a second more, and Karama gets it. No threats from Akatsuki. He corrects and comes to a stop, pulling Kakashi around. He meets one visible gray eye as steadily as he can and says, They're Jinchuriki. Opportunistic idiots are always going to think they're a good target. And besides, I just got settled here, asshole. What makes you think I'd leave Gana off? There's nothing out there for me. Everything I want is right here. Kakashi stares at him, wide-eyed and silent, and then takes a breath. His eyes fall closed for a long moment before he lets out the quiet huff that's almost a laugh and says, And you said I can't call you a warble. Karama kicks him in the shin, though not as hard as he could. Shut up, bastard. I never said I wanted you. Kakashi chuckles, but he tightens his grip on Karama's hand, pulls him close, and lets their shoulders bump. That's true, he agrees. But it's simple oversight, I'm sure. At the very least, you never said you didn't. With a roll of his eyes, Karama pulls it forward again. Whatever makes you feel better about yourself. The Kapinen opens his mouth to answer, but before he can get so much as a word out, there's a flare of orange gold wings and food drops from the sky, practically on top of them, hooking her arms around Karama's neck and making him yelp and stagger as her full weight hits him. Go! See, damn it, sweetheart. Sorry, Karama -ni. She doesn't sound it in the least, but she's grinning wide and bright as Yugito slips out of an alley to loop her fingers into the hem of Karama's shirt. Leaning over, Fu eyes Kakashi and Karama's linked hands with interest. Ooh, this is new. Why didn't you tell us you were dating the copy and Karama Ni? Karama snorts, but he shifts so she can lock her knees around his sides a little more easily. Because I wanted to at least get him into bed before you breads chased him off. Kakashi chokes. Aww, Fuba moans, leaning forward to give Karama a look that's 80% wounded eyes and 20% bloodthirsty mischief. We wouldn't do that, Karama Ni. He's not she sweet, you know. Thank the sage, Karama mutters, then raises his voice again. Pause off. You can torture a she sweet all you want, but this one's mine to torment. Yugito giggles, leaning into him, even as Fu makes very sad, very despondent noises over his shoulder. My hero, Kakashi says, dry as dust. You can thank me later, Karama tells him sweetly. Kakashi opens his mouth instantly, retort ready, before his gaze falls on Fu's grin and Yugito's knife-sharp smile as they both stare at him. He swallows and closes it again determinedly. Well, at least they're having fun, Karama thinks with a snort. He taps a claw against Fu's kneecap and asks, You two are okay. I heard Sasori hit the academy. We're fine, Yugito says immediately. Utsukata and the Jonin in command are took care of him, and the boy Utsukata has a crush on Help them too. Yeah, Fu says cheerfully, throwing her weight forward and half of Karama's shoulder and ignoring how it makes him stagger. He's kind of cute, and I'm pretty sure he likes Utsukata back. Naruto went to find them. Yugito adds, he thought they might want ramen too. Karama ums. He'd seen Utakata on his way out of the hospital when he was dragging Kakashi in, and the Kirinin had been politely abstinent about leaving, much to Tsunade's ire. He'd seemed fine, and clearly been on his way to find someone, so Karama had thrown Kakashi at her as a distraction. Good, he decides. Roshi and Han. With the lava lady. Fu says, and with a twist, she flips over Karama's shoulder, lands lightly in the street, and then spins around to grab Yugito's free hand, swinging it happily. They were helping the various gods, I think, and Karin went with them because she wanted to see them too. Which is pretty much everyone accounted for, Karama thinks, with faint satisfaction. Akatsuki hadn't had enough members to do much damage. Even Nagato and Konin had bolted before they caused more than a few blocks worth of destruction. 
And the one big battlefield from the miniature invasion is the new stretch of jungle right outside the walls. It's a heck of a lot better than the last Akats game Raging Garama witnessed. Good. He says again, reaching out to smooth down blonde hair and then ruffle green. You two did great, you know. I heard you got everyone out of harm's way. That was quick thinking. Yugito smiles, quietly pleased, and her Grupa Karama shirt tightens just a little. I think the class likes us now, she says, almost wondering. You got us Savika's far with her whenever she's free, too. It's all too easy sometimes to remember that the Jujuriki have spent an entire lifetime apart, never accepted, simply because of what other people made them. Right now, looking at Yugito's hopeful face, the light in Fu's eyes... All Karama can see is wonder and it aches in his chest a little, though we can't tell if it's in a good or a bad way. Maybe she'll be able to keep you brats out of trouble. Karama huffs and rolls his eyes when two pouts with varying degrees of severity are leveled at him. Yugito's still mostly out of practice at the expression, but Fu must have been taking lessons from Naruto. Yeah, yeah, why don't you go save some seeds for me in the half price zombie over here? Whoa! Kakashi protests mildly, even though his eye is crinkling with humor. Half price? Does that mean you bought him, Karamani? Fu asks, mischief in her smile. You know you can't return discount stuff. Kakashi chuckles, twisting his fingers further around Karamas. See? Now you're obligated to stay and look after me. I didn't buy you, Karama retorts. No one in their right minds would pay money for you, asshole. Does that mean you stole him like you stole us? Fu's expression is perfectly innocent, which means the question is anything but. Growling, Karama slaps at her and just keeps out of the way with a laugh. Go, he orders. Be a brat somewhere else. With a bright giggle, Fu darts in, wrapping her arms around his waist and hugging him tightly before she dances away, tugging Yuhito with her. Naruto, she shouts just as a blonde head rounds the corner. Naruto, Karamani is dating Kakashi! Say it a little louder, why don't you? Karama grumbles. I think a couple people in tea country might have missed that. Fu beams at him, then takes a running leap, hits the side of the building in front of them, and launches herself higher into the air. Chakra sparks, and with a whoop, she flips over orange gold wings blooming. She swoops down, catching Yugito's outstretched hands, and pulls the other girl up into the air with her before they soar away. Chome's created a monster, Karama says with amusement. I think Fu's going to forget how to walk before she's 20 at this rate. Kakashi chuckles lightly, but lets go of Karama's hand so that Karama can catch the two small bodies that come flying at him, though Sagara and Sasuke are slightly more reserved. You're dating, Karamani! Naruto cries, clinging to his shirt while Gara takes hold of several hanks of red hair and settles against his shoulder like a hurricane wouldn't budge him. You're dating the Freak Squad guy! Ma, I have a name! Kakashi objects. A famous name, even! Does that make Shisui family, too? Gara asks, sounding like he's not entirely sure about the idea. He can be the obnoxious pet. Karama proposes. Smacking! Kakashi eyes him, then snorts softly. He might even agree to that if you stop threatening to eat him. If I ate an Ujiha, I'd probably get indigestion. Kurama makes a face, lets Naruto wriggle down from his grasp, then sidesteps him neatly when he almost bolts underfoot. Ramen! Naruto cheers, catching Sasuke's hand. Come on, let's beat Fony there! We can't beat someone who can fly! Sasuke protests, but he breaks into a run nevertheless, letting Naruto pull him into a side street for a shortcut. Kurama snorts quietly, watching them disappear behind a fall of flowering vines, and then glances down at the six-year-old still walking with them. Not in the mood to run, he asks Sakura. After a moment of hesitation, she shakes her head. I'm okay walking. Is, is it really okay if I come too? Right, this Sakura has Eno and no one else, with too many bullies and not enough confidence to fill a thimble. Of course it is. Naruto invited you, didn't he? He wouldn't do that if he didn't mean it. He says, looking down at Gara, who's suddenly looking back. Wide Aquamarine eyes blink, and then Gara says very firmly, I want to walk with Sakura. Good choice, Garama almost says, but decides to leave the two of them, sort out a friendship all on their own. 
Crouching down, he sets Gara on his feet, and the redhead stumbles a step before he latches on the Sakura's sleeve. You can sit with me when we eat, he says determinedly. Sakura blinks at him, eyes wide, and looks down at her hands. For a moment, Karama almost thinks that she's about to cry, but when she looks up, there's no trace of tears. She's beaming instead, bright and happy and thankful, and she says, Thank you! Like it's everything she ever wanted just handed to her. Damn these kids, Karama thinks with an inward groan. Naruto is definitely laughing his ass off in the pure land. Fuck it all. On his left, Kakashi chuckles softly, taking his hand again and dragging his thumb over Karama's knuckles as they start walking. Another one? He asks, amused, and when Garama growls half-heartedly at him, he just offers up the beaming, bullcrap smile Karama will never admit he wears well. My, it's an honest question. If I'm going to be around, I want to know which children to dodge first. The Jinchuriki, Karama informs him without hesitation. Unless you want to end up wearing your ass for a hat. They're good kids, just over-enthusiastic. They're each capable of leveling a village with a temper tantrum, Kakashi corrects blandly, though the way his eye is crinkling shows he's finding a smile. I was an over-enthusiastic child. They're ridiculous! Monsters. Karama shrugs, looking away, because it's true. He's never denied it, not for himself or the Jinchuriki. They have power, enough to terrify everyone around them, and they're learning that they don't have to be scared of themselves. Pretty soon, nothing and no one is going to be able to stop them, and honestly, Karama looks forward to the day when everyone else realizes that. Kakashi's humor doesn't waver, though by all rights it should. If that's the case, I picked the prettiest monster of all. Karama scoffs, but he curls his fingers a little more tightly through Kakashi's. Even after what happened. There's a quiet hum. You're going to have to be more specific. A lot has happened in the last few weeks. When Garama levels a look at him unamused, he raises his free hand in surrender. Even after you turning back into a 20-story fox and attempting to eat me and three of my friends? Yes. Turning back, he said. Not turning into, not becoming, but back. Because he knows what Garama used to be. Knows what's still lurking right under his skin, and even so, his answer is still yes. You seem to be forgetting that I kissed you first. Karama manages and pretends there isn't the faintest waver in his voice. If anyone did the picking, it's me. Kakashi pauses, looking at him for a long moment, and then dips his head a little to smile clear, even though it's covered by the mask. And, are you happy with the monster you picked? Sage this man! Stopping short, Karama uses his grip on Kakashi to pull him around, to look at him where he has no choice but to see it. To see the way Karama looks at him, the expression on his face, the way every emotion is written out. Monster, he repeats. Kakashi smiles again, a small crooked thing. Box up that part of yourself, wipe off the blood, paste on a smile, and no one will ever know anything's happened. Do it in reverse, and the monster is all that's left. I've lived that way for a long time, Karama. Karama takes a breath and... It's fine. It is. There's one way forward from here and they're both going to walk that path. Together, even. And it isn't something Karama had thought to want, but he does. Yeah, he says and meets Kakashi's eyes without wavering, without a hint of hesitation. I'm happy. The monster I picked is perfect for me. And if anyone says otherwise, I'll kick their teeth in. You included. Kakashi yanks his mask down, stepping in and kissing Karama, hard hands in his hair and mouth hot and desperate. Karama surges up into a kissing back, returning every ounce of fierceness twofold. It's a kiss like a storm breaking, scattering lightning across Karama's nerves and curling through his veins with hurricane winds to leave him breathless and dazed. You! Kakashi says against his lips and kisses him again, short and hungry. You're going to kill me, Karama. Karama laughs, hooking his fingers in Kakashi's pants pockets and tugging him even closer until their chests are pressed together. But what a way to go. He mumbles and Kakashi's breath audibly catches. Karama, Karama, come on! Ramen! Naruto wails and they break apart. Kakashi sounded disappointment clear. If you don't hurry up, me and Karina are gonna eat all of it!
Not an idle threat coming from Tsuzumaki. Kakashi murmurs, tugging his mask back up with a faintly rueful smile. He drags his fingers through Garama's hair before he lets go completely. And Garama shivers a little at the feeling, then leans in. He kisses Kakashi through the mask, quick and filthy, and turns away. Ah, oh God, Brad, we're coming. He calls and tugs Kakashi along as he heads towards where Naruto is waiting.